Hey guys, welcome back. So if you guys saw my last video, it was about installing front brake ducts on this car. Um, definitely watch that if you want to know how to do that. This video is specifically focused on the rear. So what you're going to do to start off, take your rear tire off, and you're going to be taking this factory um, kind of plastic uh, wind deflector off. There's four Phillips head screws. Uh, they're number two, I believe. There's two up top here. Let me get on the bottom here. And there's two underneath right there. As you can see, if you read online, these are a pain in the ass. I managed to get three loose and strip the fourth one. I'm using just an angle grinder with a sanding, uh, you know, attachment onto it and just grinding the head off of the bolt. It actually melts the plastic before you can actually get through grinding the head off because I did it on the other side already. <laughs> That's how I know. Um, so if you try to grind through the head, it'll melt the plastic and then you can just pull this off anyway and then get on the stud of the bolt with some vice grips and twist them off. Hopefully you don't have to use an easy out or anything. So yeah, once you take it off, it looks like this in there. Let me get a better view for you. Got the two holes there, then two on the bottom. There's my screw still. I gotta take some vice grips to that to get it out because here's the plate. And when you get this out, these two were on the upper part. And then I melted through this one when I was using the angle grinder, so it just pulled right off. Um, whatever, gonna be replacing pretty much of these pieces with an air scoop that's 3D printed from Barrow.Tech and I'll leave the links in the video description below. Alright, so once you get your brake rotor and uh, caliper off, gonna be in your caliper bracket of course, you gotta take this off to get your rotor off, um, but you got your dust shield here and from what I've seen online, the easiest way to put this two and a half inch flange on here is right on the bottom, so like right here. So you're gonna want to cut a two and a half inch hole out of it here, as close to the hub as you can get. Um, just a view from behind, we'll show you that. It kind of goes underneath the axle and in front of the tow link, kind of in between the tow link and the axle. Um, you gotta make kind of a sharp 45 before you hit the control arm with the hose. So definitely wrap well, you're not gonna be able to wrap the hose with duct tape here because it's got it's gonna melt. So you might want to wrap the control arm with some kind of tape to prevent the uh, the uh, you know abrasive surface to contact the hose. All right, guys. So here are the rear barrow uh, brake duct inlets for the uh, S2000. These fit all year S2000s. These replace the factory plastic um, wind deflectors in front of your rear tires. Um, so it's just a pretty much, pretty big scoop that hangs down below the car. And then that's the outlet, two and a half inch flange that's going to be feeding my rear rotors. So if you buy these, he will include um, new M6 hardware for you to mount these to the car with. So that's always great because the Phillips head ones that are on the car from the factory easily strip out as you just saw. Right, guys, so here we are with the rear. Uh, the Barrow inlets are right here, flanged to the two and a half inch silicone tubing. Uh, I tried originally going between the tow link and the control arm to keep it up higher, but there's no way you're going to be able to do that cleanly. So drop it below the tow link. I have a zip tie securing it to the tow link there. I wrapped the tow link in a piece of Gorilla Tape, uh, this stuff right here, as well as the hose so that when it rubs back and forth it won't wear a hole straight through the silicone really easily. So zip tied there and then it's zip tied back here against the control arm. Now here is the uh, MacGyver kind of uh, setup because I didn't get my aluminum flanges. I ordered two for the front and then realized I need to do the rears as well. I wanted to do the rears before the track day. So I ordered a second pair. It's been a week and they still haven't got here. Those got here in two days, so I don't understand that. But I'm scrambling here. I gotta get to Connecticut in like five hours. I'm in New York still, car's not done. Race is uh, pretty much gates open tonight at five. So this is my solution for temporary, guys. Um, when I was cutting the hole with my Dremel, I was using a cutoff wheel and a sanding bit here. So what I did was I made tabs and didn't cut off the tabs yet before I uh, made the circle and then I bent the tabs back, cleaned them up with the Dremel sanding bit uh, wheel there and then made sure there was nothing sharp poking the hose, grabbed some quarter 20 hardware um, and bolted three tabs to the silicone hose. I think it's going to work just as good as the flange. The bolts might disrupt the flow marginally, but this is a great makeshift way to get to the track today. Um, pretty solid in there. I'm not too worried about it going anywhere. 
that's the final product. When I get the flanges in the mail, I'm gonna cut the tabs off, round this, make it a little more circular, drill my holes and bolt the flange on, but this is my ghetto solution for the time being. Uh, hope you guys enjoy that makeshift uh, kind of setup, but it's gonna be 90 degrees tomorrow racing on the track, and I've never ran this car when it was like above 75, so I wanna save my rear wheel bearings, save the front brakes, save the pads as long as I can on the track, and be able to just cut hard laps all session long. All right guys, so welcome back. This is the aluminum flange. That's the same exact ones as I ordered for the front in my previous videos, as you've seen. If not, check the link in the description below to watch the earlier videos of this series. Um, but so what I did here is the rear dust shield's got quite a contour to it at the bottom. As you can see, uh, I cut the tabs off that I used to make my ghetto, my ghetto tabs to make this work temporarily without the flange before my track day. Uh, so I cut all those off. I made a nice round uh, two and a half inch circle here. And this is my two and a half inch flange. I took a pair of I took a pair of vice grips and slowly bent this edge all the way out. It looks like shit, but you'll never see it underneath the car. Um, you really want to flare that out almost flat. It's at like a 30 degree angle maybe right now, because when you put it behind here, you want it to seal all the way up to the face. Because as you can see, the bottom edge of this really contours forward. So you're gonna want to put a lip on that. If you don't want to contort your dust shield, you can you can get away with it pretty cleanly. All right, so here's another view of the rear of the Dremel work I just did. Got a nice clean hole cut out, two holes drilled, match drilled with the aluminum plate that I held behind it. This is what shows you kind of the angle that I bent this with a pair of vice grips and then tapped it on a block with a hammer to kind of make it smooth. Um, so these contours will hug the contour of the dust shield. So when I put it behind there, you know, it will, uh, it will completely seal off all the way around there. All I gotta use is two bolts on the rear. I don't really have room for three, so. Um, of course, the paint's still a little bit wet. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna slap that on there, and then you just connect your hose like it was before, and the rear will be complete. All right, so what we did to the other side, we just gotta finish off on this side. Uh, I got these bent tabs here, I bent them back. Gotta dremel them off now. Got my flange profile already bent. It's gonna lock in behind here. Standing bit attachment. 